We all know of the big three when it comes to vintage denim, Levi's, Lee, and Wrangler. But what you may not know is there's a variety of other brands and companies out there that have been long since defunct uh, that made really cool and uh, quality products as well. And this is one of them. This is a brand called Foremost. We're gonna talk about how to identify this brand and uh, why it's so cool and why you can pick it up for pretty cheap. Do you have a vintage denim that you are looking to sell? Maybe you need it appraised or maybe you just need a little bit more information about the garment you have. Well, we recommend webuyoldjeans.com. These guys are the best in the business, in my opinion. They offer the best prices and have the most knowledgeable information and experts at their fingertips. And they offer unmatched service in the industry. So whether you're looking for a free appraisal, maybe you're looking just to offload some denim, or maybe just a little bit of information, webuyoldjeans.com is the place for you. Welcome people of planet Earth and all planets beyond. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Josh. And yes, we're gonna identify or take a look at least at this pair of 1940s Foremost denim jeans. Foremost was actually an in-house brand for JC Penney. Uh, they have a long history all the way back into the 20s and the 30s, maybe even a little bit before that, uh, but uh, reached their heights in the 40s and into the 50s as JCPenney's grew and grew. In fact, JCPenney was actually from Missouri, uh, where I live. And uh, actually the first official JCPenney store was also in Missouri. Uh, but Foremost had been around for quite some time before that. And uh, they created all kinds of outdoor wear. Uh, they created some... Uh, like camping gear they created, even bikes. But one of the things that they also made was denim jeans. So let's take a look at some of the qualities of this particular pair of denim jeans. Now, one thing to note before we get too deep is that uh, these in-house brands by JCPenney, Sears and stuff, don't have tons of good information. So a lot of the information we're working on is guesswork, is uh, people's research, is our own research. So uh, we can't be 100% on everything, but we're gonna give you our best overview of how we look at jeans like this. So first you'll notice that these jeans have rivets. Uh, Foremost was a typically generally considered a cheaper brand than the big three denim companies that we normally would uh, associate with quality. So they tended to use cheaper methods like bar tacks. But in this case, they didn't. They actually used rivets. Uh, they started using rivets early on. And as the, the years progressed, they moved away from rivets into just straight up bar tacks, which is one of the identifying markers uh, between these jeans and uh, later versions of these jeans is that they actually have rivets. Uh, these are rounded rivets. They're actually kind of cool because uh, you don't see these rounded rivets very often. A lot of times you have flat rivets. Uh, or dimple rivets, but these are rounded off. Uh, we have rivets in the uh, for the pockets, for the watch pocket, and down here at the bottom of the crotch, which is a uh, sort of a remnant of the old style of, of creating riveted jeans. So opening up on the inside, we can take a look. We have a button fly here. Uh, this is a, another signal to us that this is an older pair of Foremost because uh, by the 50s, they'd almost exclusively gone to zippers as uh, the consumer really liked the zipper and the convenience of a zipper. Uh, so having uh, buttons is a good sign. This is an older pair uh, from earlier than the 50s. And you take, open it up a little bit deeper, we can see they actually have rivets on the back. Um, this is uh, familiar if you're familiar with Levi's. Uh, Levi's had these same rivets on their back pockets, but they actually hid them behind denim. But here they do not. On the back side, we have rivets that are exposed on the back pockets. Uh, consumers ended up not liking this because they scratched things, uh, but with this rounded rivet, they definitely didn't hook on things or poke through things like uh, the Levi's might have. Now let's take a look on the back side. You can see the stitching along the back pockets. Uh, it's kind of interesting. They are sort of d run diagonal. Uh, I don't think that's intentional, uh, though the pockets are a little bit cockeyed. Uh, basically it's a to fit to form a little bit better looks like this guy may have hung something on the back of his uh, pockets because this is uh, dimpled like that where it's not on this side on this particular on this other pocket uh, but you can see here the stitching on the back is not an arcuate style uh, it's a more straight style this definitely is a is an indicator that these are uh not as old as foremost can come in the 20s and 30s they actually were using like v-shaped arcuates similar to the levi's arcuates before going to a more straight arcuate, I think for the remainder of their life. So you can look up here in the top corner, you can see some stitching up here. This stitching was actually uh, where a patch would have gone, just like with Levi's, they had, uh, Foremost had a leather patch 
up here in the corner. This one was obviously removed. Uh, I think they also transitioned to uh, Jack Ron later on, um, roughly around the time Levi's did. A lot of these uh, in-house brands for some of these uh, uh, box store uh, companies would just basically see what the main guys were doing and copy them in a cheaper way. Um, so a lot of times you can see how uh, you can, a lot of times you can follow the transitions of the major brands and they sort of somewhat correspond to these in-house brands. So let's take a look at the legs where we can see some exposed selvage. These are selvage denim uh, jeans, by the way. Um, and what's interesting about these foremost jeans here is that they are one-sided selvage. So this out seam actually has just one side of selvage, whereas the other side is an overlock. Um, the overlock seam would become much more popular later as we uh, progress through the decades. So from what we can tell, these jeans were advertised as the uh, foremost five pocket jeans, obviously one, two, three, four, and five on the back side. Um, this pocket right here, uh, particularly on this pair of, of jeans, is much larger than what they would become. They would tuck this pocket in a little bit further. Now, while foremost may not be Levi's, it may not be Lee, and it may not be Wrangler, they're still fairly respectable. These are a late 40s jean, and you can have this for a fraction of the price a pair of Levi's from the same era would cost you. So if you're looking for an affordable alternative to the astronomical prices of Levi's or Lee or Wrangler jeans from the era, check out Foremost. They have some great offerings. They look great. They feel great. I think you'll be plenty happy. Now, if you have a pair of these Foremost or if you have a pair of Levi's or any old vintage denim jeans, uh, check out webuyoldjeans.com. They are the sponsor of this video and uh, they are the best in the business, offer super fair pricing, and they would love to put some money in your pocket for the denim in your closet. So uh, check them out in the link in the description below. Otherwise, we will see you guys soon. Peace.